G'day and welcome to this Australian Open Life. It's the Spotlight Series and today we're shining a spotlight on Player Watch and the player that's on our watch today is the Australian wildcard Madison Inglis who yesterday uh, won her way through to the third round of the Australian Open. She beat Hayley Baptiste, the American uh, the wild card, the Australian wild card, up against the uh, American qualifier. And today's episode, we were tossing up doing a phantom call of the last three games of that match. Uh, we uh, decided to ditch that idea today. We're just going to be completely focusing on previewing the match between Madison Inglis, the Australian wild card, and the Estonian, uh, the Estonian. Uh, Kanaya Kanepi, 36 years of age, the Estonian. Can you believe it? She tipped out, uh, wait for this, she tipped out the 16th seed, Angelique Kerber. We're going to take a short break uh, introducing the Sights, Sounds, Summer of Tennis at Melbourne Park uh, in Australia. Don't go away, we'll be right back. Thanks for joining us again on this Australian Open Life. We really appreciate you taking time out of your uh, Christmas, New Year's break, even though we're into the middle of January. Hopefully you're having a great start to the new year, given all that's going on. And I certainly hope that the, uh, the tennis, the first Grand Slam of the year, is providing um, a bit of entertainment, a bit of a distraction, a distraction from what's going on in the world. And that's the whole reason uh, we're bringing you uh, these episodes, uh, just to um, uh, bring some uh, light entertainment, some distraction uh, to your day and if you're an Australian tennis fan I bet you've got the biggest smile on your face after yesterday. Madison Inglis, uh, the wild card, winning through uh, her second round match. Um, uh, she is on some kind of run and uh, we're previewing uh, in this episode her upcoming match with Kai Kanepi who is unseated. So we've got two unseated uh, uh, players uh, who've had the best possible starts to their uh, Grand Slam tournament. They're finding themselves on opposing sides of the net in the third round of a Grand Slam, the first Grand Slam of the year. Uh, Madison Inglis, uh, the wild card player from uh, Australia. Kai Kanepi, who has flown, travelled all the way from Estonia, where no doubt 
Uh, there's still tracks in the snow left by uh, uh, St Nick on his way back to the North Pole, uh, delayed because of all the COVID <laughs> regulations and all the different passports, he, health certificates he's had to show uh, through border controls on his way back to the North Pole. But uh, uh, we're kind of waxing lyrical here. So but what we're going to do, uh, um, just to give you an idea, um, we're just going to uh, preview this match uh, by just looking at some key stats. We're going to look into our crystal tennis ball and try and forecast a winner based on a single solitary stat. And if you're a, a regular listener to this Australian Open Life over the past three to four weeks, you'll know that we've been doing uh, some exposés on uh, the players behind the stats, looking into what makes a player uh, uh, thrive and survive uh, at this level because the margins are so thin. And one of the, uh, the stats we've been pulling out in isolation is success on break point percentage on their serve. So how successful are these players when defending break points on their own serve? So we're going to use that as a bit of a yardstick. It, it might be, um, it might be uh, a bit of a pie in the sky, um, plucking something out of thin air, trying to make something out of nothing. But why not? Why not have a bit of fun with these stats? Why not um, try to forecast the winner? Um, but I'll tell you what, uh, uh, the other thing we're going to do uh, after that, we're going to look at how these ladies got to the third round of the Australian Open. And it's worth taking a look back in time um, uh, to day one of the Australian Open because I tell you what, these girls have had some really, really um, uh, incredible and entertaining wins. And uh, if they don't end up on uh, Rod Laver Arena uh, at a, a prime time, either what's today, Friday night, uh, uh, so tomorrow night, Saturday, I will be putting in a protest because these these two girls deserve um, a bit of the limelight and that's actually one of the reasons, the whole reasons uh, this Australian Open life came to be is we want to give a bit of a spotlight to some of these uh, lesser known players, the players that sometimes are playing a little bit off Broadway, they might be ranked outside the top 100, inside the top 250 and the margins are so thin, the competition is so fierce that when they have these moments, uh, let's give them, let's give them uh, uh, a bit of Let's give them a bit uh, more than just a polite round of applause for a great win just to get through the third round. Let's, um, let's uh, delve into them as players and people. So we're going to take a short break. Uh, we're plugging in a little bit of footage from the regional tournaments in Bendigo and Traralgon, uh, the qualifiers, also the uh, wheelchair tournaments that took place in the first week of January. Uh, out in Craigieburn, uh, the international tournament there, and uh, and then we'll be right back after some sights, sounds, summer of tennis. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Thank you. 
Well, we're back again here on this Australian Open Life. It's the Spotlight Series Player Watch, and today the player that is on our watch is the Australian wildcard, Madison Inglis, uh, who is playing the well-travelled, uh, <laughs> well-travelled Estonian, Kai Kanepi, uh, 36 years of age, against the 24-year-old Australian. Um, this uh, is a juicy match coming up and we wanted to um, pay, give it its dues. Um, this is going to be a competitive match. Uh, these girls have had some really, really uh, um, spirited wins to get here. So um, uh, um, it would seem obvious that uh, <laughs> this Australian Open life, we'd start with the Australian. No, we're going to go with the Estonian because uh, Kai Kanepi is a pretty pretty well-known name on the tennis circuit. And uh, uh, why, let's start off uh, with, uh, with Madison Inglis, uh, her opponent, Kai Kanepi. And let's just take a look into her background. Um, uh, first of all, uh, we'll just uh, take a look at her um, overall results. Um, uh, Estonia, she was, she was born in Hapsalu in Estonia, plays right-handed. She's a tall player, 5'11". Five, uh, five um, a girl from the 80s, born in 85. Um, uh, she's got a career ranking of 115 at the moment. And uh, over her career, have a listen to this, she's got four singles titles. She had a career high of 15. Have a listen to this. Prize money of nearly seven million US dollars. How about that? And she's had um, a great singles career. Uh, 541 wins over the journey. Uh, uh, um, well ahead of 311 losses over the journey. Uh, so let's just have a look. Um, uh, for those of you that haven't uh, um, come across uh, this Australian Open life before, um, what we like to do uh, during a player watch is just take a look at the last two um, uh, competitive games that uh, the players had uh, at the end of 2021. Uh, so let's do that for uh, Kai Kanepi. Um, uh, at the end of 2021, she was uh, um, uh, in... Uh, November, she was in Estonia, her home country, Harbnim, and I'm sure I've pronounced that wrong. The ITF tennis tournament, uh, Europe. She had two uh, two uh, uh, matches there. She got through the um, uh, the round of 32 there against the, uh, the Swede, Kaya Henneman, six one six one. But then she had to pull out, retired um, uh, at just uh, three two in the first set uh, against uh, uh, the UK's Katie Swan. So. Uh, uh, um, then we go forward to the Melbourne Somerset. Uh, she had a break to get over whatever it was, whether it was an injury, and uh, maybe she had to organise her COVID passes to get through the Australia's hard borders. It's easy getting into the main. Um, it's easier getting into Australia than it is the main draw of the Australian Open. Um, she had two matches uh, through the round of 32. A good hard-fought three-set win um, against Jacqueline Christian of Romania, and then came up against the Croatian Anna Koja, uh, ranked 67 in the world, and lost in three sets: two six, six three, three six. Um, and uh, so. Uh, looking into 2022, uh, as we just click over here, and uh, yeah, the Melbourne Somerset was the only uh, tournament she played in. So just to round out this look uh, at uh, Kai Kanepi's uh, profile, because we want to try and keep everything as short and sharp as possible for you, um, because we know you want to watch the tennis. You don't want to be stuck on, on YouTube uh, watching... <laughs> Watching, watching uh, episodes created by some bloke banging on in Melbourne, Australia. Uh, you want to be watching the tennis and the live action. But um, we, if we just take a look at our favourite stat, uh, because we're just trying to get an idea of how uh, these two players match up against each other. So over her career, uh, these stats are, no, these are the 2022 stats. So this is right up to date. So in 2022, the break points saved by Kai Kanepi, she's going at exactly 50%. So keep that in mind because uh, the very last thing we're gonna do in this episode of um, the Spotlight series, the Player Watch, what the last thing we'll do in this episode is compare the break points saved 50% for Kai Kanepi against Madison Inglis. So I uh, hope you enjoyed that little, uh, 
that little uh, retrospective into Kai Kanepi, if you've never heard of her before. Um, now, uh, we're going to take a short break and uh, we'll finish off uh, looking at Kai Kanepi by just taking a look at her journey uh, through the Australian Open, how she ended up at uh, round three on the opposite side of the net to be facing Madison Inglis in the third round. Don't go away. We will be right back. Welcome back to this Australian Open Life and we'll get straight back into it. And uh, Angelique Kerber, the number 16 seed of the Australian Open, the German, got a very nasty, <laughs> not nasty, come on. She got a very rude surprise uh, in her first round match at the end of the first round match on Kia Arena, the new sunken 5,000 seat uh, arena, sunken court arena uh, that's coming into uh, um, being commissioned for the first time at the Australian Open. Uh, presenting matches on the eastern side of the Australian uh, Open Concourse. And Angelique Kerber was sent packing in straight sets. I bet she didn't expect that. No doubt she's uh, um, played Kai Kanepi and shared a lock, many a locker room with her over, over the years. But 6-4, 6-3, that Kai Kanepi got up. Uh, so, uh, you know, you can, um, this, uh, this is the sort of result uh, that that the uh, lower ranked players can, can uh, look to, that we're sort of expecting these sort of upsets because with, with all the ups and downs in the world over the last two years, you've, you've got to expect that the, um, it's going to affect um, professional athletes for sure. So um, if we look at the stats of the uh, kerber Kanepi uh, match, and we'll just go down to our favourite stat to see how uh, uh, Kai Kanepi fared uh, for break points one. Uh, and uh, uh, we're looking for the serve, the key stats of the serve. Um, so for the serve and the return, um, they just don't quite match up against our favourite uh, resource there. So, um, but anyway, it still serves a purpose. So Kai Kanepi, uh, break points won, 44% uh, percentage. Um, and uh, Angelique Kerber actually had 50%, so up there. But it's just an interesting stat to try and isolate and try and see if there's some sort of line we can draw through uh, generally. Now, in the second round, Kai Kanepi uh, didn't come up against a uh, seeded player. She came up against another unranked player and apologies if I haven't mentioned that Kai Kanepi is unseated at the Australian Open. She has a world ranking of 115 so uh, she's, uh, she'll be happy with her progress. Now the, uh, the player that she came up against in the second round was from the Czech Republic, Marie Buskova and uh, Kai Kanepi was successful uh, in that match as well. She won that second round match 6-2, 7-6. Uh, the tie break went 7-3. Um, so uh, the first round match, an hour and 20 minutes. Uh, the second round match for Kai Kanepi, um, an hour and a half out on court seven. So she was back <laughs> back out off Broadway. Um, but uh, the uh, 
the, uh, the tail of the tape. Uh, if we go to our favourite stat here, the one we've picked out to isolate, the break points won by Kai Kanepi, 75%. Her opponent could only manage 45%. So uh, uh, plucking out this stat, uh, the reason we do that is we're trying to get an insight into um, uh, what type of mental strength or stamina or resilience is each player bringing to the table when they face off? Because let's face it, your bread and butter is your serve and that's where you're most likely uh, to either um, uh, push through any difficulties or uh, um, uh, make the best or the most if your uh, uh, opponent is uh, putting pressure on you and you're losing your serve. So that's the reason we've decided to settle on this stat for the time being. Um, so that's it for Kai Kanepi. So I hope you give, I hope that gives you a reasonable picture of uh, uh, the player that uh, the Australian is up against. Uh, so that rounds off that part of the episode. Uh, when we come back from this break, uh, which will be the sights, sounds, summer of tennis at the Australian Open, plus a little bit of footage from the regional tournaments in Bendigo and Tarelgan, we'll be back with uh, an, uh, a similar uh, expose of the game of the Australian wildcard, Madison Inglis. We'll be back right after this break. Thanks for joining us again. Really appreciate you uh, sticking with us uh, on this Australian Open Life. Uh, you can find us, uh, of course, uh, all over the internet, uh, anywhere in the globe. We've got listeners from Russia, Canada, France, Argentina, Spain, and of course America, and naturally, of course, Australia. And the Australians will be uh, beside themselves after yesterday, two Australian wildcards winning against unseated players. They will be um, uh, they will be so pleased with their results that they're able to make the most of their wildcard opportunity. Uh, just briefly, Chris Chris O'Connell uh, winning yesterday against the 13th seed Diego. Schwartzman from Argentina. He's uh, given, been given the big adios. He's off, uh, on his way to the next tournament already, no doubt. Uh, and uh, Chris O'Connell, uh, we did a, um, a preview of his third round match yesterday. He's come up against the American Maxime Cressy, who was born in France but plays under the American flag. And uh, similarly, uh, the other wildcard upset yesterday was, uh, uh, well, wasn't really an upset, uh, really, because uh, Madison Inglis. Uh, was uh, um, the uh, the smiling winner uh, at the end of the second round match uh, that winning in three sets. So we're just going to do a similar preview. Uh, we're just going to uh, have a look at Madison's game. Just the one solitary stat that we like to pull out, and uh, we're going to take a, um, a look at Madison's. Uh, uh, we've already done an insight into the Australian wildcards, but we'll just revisit that for Madison just very briefly. Uh, we'll look at her 2021 run into the Australian summer uh, as she finished off 2021, and then we'll do a quick look at her run through the Australian Open so far, and then a quick look at uh, her um, stats. Don't go away, we'll be right back on this Australian Open life.
You're listening to This Australian Open Life. You can watch on uh, watch us on the internet all over the world from anywhere you are. And we've also got our podcast going, of course, uh, hosted by Acast. But you can find us on Spotify, on uh, uh, all those <laughs> channels, the names which just escaped me. Isn't that hopeless? But you can find us on wisewords.com.au. Uh, you can find the podcast and uh, listen from the comfort of your lounge room, your laptop, your mobile, when you're on the train, when you're on the plane, anywhere in the world, this Australian Open Life will be pleased and happy to keep you company. So let's just take a quick look. How did Madison Inglis, <laughs> and, well, she's, uh, she'll feel like she's uh, Charlie from the Chocolate Factory with the golden ticket. Um, but uh, let's not get carried away. It's only uh, day four of uh, day five uh, today, Friday, the 21st of January, 2022, and it's been a golden week for Madison English. She'll be so pleased, uh, and we're pleased for her as well, of course. So let's just take a look. How did she get to round three of the Australian Open? Well, she came up against the Canadian. Uh, she came up against the Canadian uh, Leela Fernandez, and uh, Leela Fernandez. She is a, uh, a very highly respected player on the tour. Uh, you don't get to be uh, the 23rd seed of the Australian Open with, <laughs> without some decent skills around the net. But Madison Inglis had something to say for that. She's, uh, they were playing on the 1573 arena. In, and after an hour and 23 minutes, it was Madison presenting at the net, at the net offering her handshake uh, out of res in respect to her opponent and saying, well played, uh, and the scoreboard said, well played, uh, Maddie. it's a 6-4-6-2 win to you. And if we just take a look into the stats, we'll just take a look at our, uh, our favourite stat uh, in this case, which is the one stat we like to look at to see uh, how a player's mental resilience gets them through a game, when their serve is under pressure, when they're facing a break point. And uh, no surprise here that Maddie's break points won, she was serving at 60%, and her opponent uh, was a flat out zero. Um, so that, uh, that uh, augurs well, uh, we think, for her matchup. So, um, Layla Fernandez, uh, that was the end of her tournament. Now next, she came up against, um, it was the, uh, round two on Margaret Court Arena. Uh, a great night for, uh, for Madison to ply a trade in front of family and friends at home, Grand Slam. The wild card up against the qualifier who won the women's, won a place in the Australian Open main draw as a, uh, a women's singles uh, qualifying uh, final uh, winner. Hayley Baptiste, the American, uh, who's also starting out on her, uh, trying to solidify her place on the WTA tour inside the top 100. Hayley Baptiste, who is uh, a, a really decent player. Uh, we came across her uh, while we were there on um, uh, qualifying, uh, single, uh, qualifying singles finals day for the ladies. She was up against, in her final, the Chinese player Yuan. And she got through in three sets. And she moves oh. around the court really well, Hayley Baptiste. She's got a great, great hand-eye coordination. Uh, and the quali so a qualifier up against a wild card. And it was Inglis who won in two hours and seven minutes. They battled it out like nobody's business. The first set was very tight, 7-6. Um, went down to 7-4, uh, deciding that set. And then Hayley Baptiste uh, took advantage. Sometimes happens where the winner of a tight first set sometimes can't quite go on with the job. 6-2, the American beat the Australian. And then the Australian switched up a gear and went 6-2 in the third. Great result for uh, Maddie Inglis. Uh, uh, a great day for Australian tennis yesterday. Uh, uh, complimenting uh, the wild card men's winner Chris O'Connell who beat the Argentinian and that's how we came to be speaking about Madison Inglis who will probably be playing tomorrow Saturday against Kai Kanepi. So next we're going to just uh, um, calm down a bit <laughs> and then while we're calming down you take a look and a listen at the Sights Sounds Summer of Tennis. We'll be right back after this break.
G'day, welcome back to This Australian Open Life. And this is the final segment of the preview of the third round match between Kai Kanepi from Estonia, the unseated uh, player up against the wild card, also unseated, obviously. So we're just going to finish off by taking a quick look at, uh, at Madison Inglis, uh, how she uh, has been faring in her last two immediate tournaments before the Australian Open. Um, so she did have a couple of uh, uh, tournaments uh, at the end of um, 2021, but uh, we'll just take a look at how she's fared in her, in her uh, lead up to the Australian Open. She uh, based herself in Adelaide um, at the start of the year. She played uh, the most recent tournament, so they're both Adelaide Internationals, uh, 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 Tournament 2, then Tournament 1. So Madison uh, uh, had two, has had uh, a, good, a good hit out over the, uh, the lead up in the summer. So uh, January 10 to 15, that lead up tournament, uh, uh, Madison uh, had a good uh, three set win in the round of 32 against uh, Danka Kavincic from, and uh, drum roll as I just double check this player's uh, country, because I don't recognize that flag, and uh, it's Montenegro. There you go. So um, uh, Danka from Montenegro, uh, ranked 99 in the world, but uh, Madison got through in three sets, 6-4, 1-6, And then she was up against the Slovenian Tamara Zinanestek, and that opponent, ranked 31 in the world, uh, got the better of Madison there, 2-6, 1-6. Uh, in the first week of uh, uh, 2022 uh, was the Adelaide International 1. Uh, Madison uh, fared a bit better. She had uh, uh, three really good matches. Uh, she played two qualifying rounds. Uh, the first game, uh, the first match against Ale Alexandra Bazanovic, uh, another wild card entry into that particular tournament, also Australian, Madison 6-4, 6-4. Uh, her next match was against the Spalian. Irini Burillo Escarela, uh, Madison 1 6, 1 6 4, and then she came up against Shelby Rogers. And the step up in quality was too much for Madison on that occasion. She lost 1 6 3 6, but she would have been delighted. And that's five very good competitive matches for Madison, which probably. Um, explains her great run at the Australian Open into the third round. So to finish off, uh, we're going to compare our, uh, our single isolated stat for these players. As we uh, heard earlier, Kai Kanepi, uh, her break point percentage won. When she's under pressure, she wins 50% of the time during her career. Now, we haven't got similar stats from Madison, so we've had to have a look at her ITF stats, uh, basically. Uh, her stats... Uh, uh, for uh, the ITF uh, side of things as opposed to um, the uh, WTA and wouldn't you know it that uh, they don't exist. So Matt that's, uh, that's uh, just a um, that's just uh, more a commentary on how young in her career uh, Madison is. So um, I would say based on uh, uh, we could compare uh, their first two matches. So Madison, uh, her breakpoint percentage uh, in the match against Hayley Baptiste was 46%. Uh, Hayley Baptiste actually outperformed her there at 60%, 67% uh, break points won. And against Layla Fernandez, as we heard earlier, uh, Madison at, uh, going at 60%. So if we compare that to uh, uh, Kai Kanepi, uh, her career um, success of 50%. So it's uh, what we're trying to say is, as a preview, who's going to win? Well, it's going to boil down to more things than a single stat break points won, but it's very even. And uh, um, uh, Madison has a lot more to her game, and uh, and she'd be feeling confident because she's uh, she's tossed out the number 23 seed from Canada, Layla Fernandez, and uh, and she'll be feeling uh, that she can match it with Kai Kanepi, as experienced as Kai Kanepi is, and she's also uh, um, sent 
the number 16, Angelique Kerber from Germany packing. Um, Madison will be liking her chances and it could well be that the difference between these two players uh, come Saturday night, which is when I think this uh, match will be played. But please check the uh, Australian Open website just to make sure. Uh, it would might well be that it is the Australian home crowd that uh, gets Madison Inglis over the line because uh, I don't think uh, Madison is suffering from any nerves at all. I think she'll be quite quite motivated, quite engaged and, and charged and uh, it could well be that we'll see her accelerate through to the fourth round. Wouldn't that be a fantastic result uh, for Australian tennis and especially considering that this year the Australian Open is celebrating a hundred years of women's tennis at the Australian Open honouring Margaret Molesworth from New South Wales who was the very first Australian Open champion and we'll finish off this episode of uh, the Spotlight series, Player Watch, uh, This Australian Open Life. For those uh, who are keen listeners and for those who have just picked us up from around the world, you'll know that over the last week we've been putting another spotlight into the mix, and that's the spotlight on Ash Barty's Grand Slam at Dream Team Cup. And we've released the names of those players. It's uh, The team consists of Ash Barty and seven other women who have held the number one double WTA ranking for more, a hundred weeks or more in uh, uh, not even a calendar year, the, uh, the, the, the entire reign, a hundred weeks being the minimum, uh, only eight women have achieved that. Last year Ash Barty joined that elite select group of women. So Ash Barty's Grand Slam Dream Team Cup also includes two super subs, one of them being Margaret Molesworth and the other one that we're going to announce uh, very early next week so please keep an eye out for that team and uh, we'll be having some fun with those announcements throughout the rest of the Australian Open the first Grand Slam of the year concluding next Sunday the 30th of January with the men's singles finals thanks for joining us on this Australian Open life you've been listening to me <laughs> the, the bloke who walks sometimes known as the bloke who bangs on a bit we're based in Melbourne Australia Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. Please keep following. Keep, we, we please keep enjoying <laughs> these episodes and enjoy the tennis. We hope you're having a great, uh, a great um, uh, time keeping an eye on these uh, elite international tennis players. So uh, that about wraps it up. Hope you enjoyed that that very rudimentary summary. <laughs> I'm not going to pat myself on the back about the, qu the quality of this episode. Um, it was really just about bringing together all those names uh, of all those players and uh, just letting you know that that's where things are at. Because uh, you know we live in a digital age, but it's actually sometimes not that easy to find all this this information. And the Christmas New Year's break. I mean, who wants to spend all their time? Uh, looking at endless streams of uh, apps and websites and um, you know, <laughs> so let us do all the hard work for you uh, that's what we're here for and um, it's so um, very much appreciated that uh, we're finding out that uh, from most of the viewers uh, whether it's by comments or likes or subscriptions that uh, this Australian Open Life is uh, hitting the mark for you You've been listening to Bloke Who Walks. This was our Wild Cards episode of the Spotlight series. Have a great new year. Thanks for listening, and we'll chat to you very soon. Bye for now. Based in Melbourne, Australia, this Australian Open Life is produced by Wise Words Media and Calumny Films.